Hello, everyone. How are you all doing on this beautiful Sunday? <laughs> I hope everyone's doing well. You can say hi in the chat if you want. I am Leticia Gillett, and this streaming is sponsored by Lenovo. Thank you, Lenovo. And we're going to continue. For those of you who missed uh, the last episodes, we have been doing the innocent archetype. And today we're gonna to continue modeling the old lady, the sweet old lady. And hopefully we'll be done today with it. And then next week is just gonna be posing and rendering. And then we'll be done with the innocent archetype. And then we move forward to a different archetype that we can choose together if you guys want. So, pardon my hair, I need a haircut. So it's a bit puffy. <laughs> But that's not what it matters. What matters is 3D. So uh, let me share my screen. One second. How are you all doing? Everything going well? Any questions about the stuff we talked last week? Someone asked me what was this orangey thing here on my pen. This is the ergonomic um, grip. So, you know, like, Sometimes when you, you sculpt in with the thin thing, like your fingers, they get kind of like, like this, you know, and you might start having a pain on your fingers. So I got this as a solution. You see how my hand gets a bit bigger and the grip is wider and it helps me. So if anyone interested, it's called Ergo, you see, Ergo Plus. And um, yeah, or you can find another variation of it some people put foam just buy foam and tape it and and it make a big grip actually like some people like a very big grip this one works well for me so that is that all right any questions before we start anyone can put the question on the chat and i'm going to like i said share my screen so like this and we go all right so let's roll it um uh what that dieb 3d said hey looking forward to the stream loving the other one so far and learning a lot thank you yeah i'm glad everyone feels like they're learning stuff i'm learning stuff too you know i'm having to design and sculpt on the fly in front of people is definitely not a something I, i'm used to it eugenie said hi leticia hi hi eugenie uh nick said i discovered the series a few weeks ago and finished catching up with your episode this morning happy finally yay yes let's watch live because then we can have fun and talk <laughs> uh comedy media brazil said saraki uh do you think it, they sell this in brazil i'm not sure but they might have variations of this grip, you know, other brands and stuff. I'm not sure, but I saw a documentary uh, from Pixar and this lady, she just got like a piece of foam, you know, those like um, noodles, foam noodles, like, you know, cylindrical. And she cut it and placed it. So she's like, have a big grip. Just imagine modeling with the big grip, like something like this, this size. So just imagine that you're doing like this instead of holding tiny like this with your hand. So yeah, because you can get that cramps, cramp feeling on your fingers. And some old lady talk. We're gonna sculpt the old lady. So should be fine. <laughs> Pedro said, Oi Lati, good to see you here. Yeah, good to see you too, Pedro. Felipe, Felipe is here, he's the boss, so we can start now. So <laughs> let's do it, let's jump right into this. I'm ambitious today, let's see if we can finish or be very, very close to finish. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. So this is the block out we did last week. Remember, we're very concerned about making sure the silhouette, very sweet and round shapes and stuff looking from the front view, you know, very non-threatening. That's that's the idea, right? Max, howdy. <laughs> Let's call some old lady, Max. All right. 
Cool. For those of you who don't know, Max was my beloved, he is beloved teacher forever. I'm always going to bug him when I need stuff. But he's the one who taught me Maya, who taught me a lot of discipline and mindset to study and things like that. And uh, a lot of it also, the way he teaches, uh, inspired me to want to teach, you know. So, yeah, good stuff. So, okay, so let's start our old lady. Like I said, I'm thinking something like, She's gonna have like her little eyes like closed, like sweet closed eyes. And like some high eyebrows kind of like doing this shape. So we have this shape going down and then we have this sweet shape going like this. So she's gonna look very sweet. And then she's gonna have a huge sweet smile. And instead of doing like a simple mouth like this, I was thinking she could have sort of like a beak mouth almost, you know, like, a, you know, how like a little creature feeling beak mouth smile. So, and then we're going to put a little chin here. So this mask, right, is going to kind of go up like this. You're going to have that smile. Then we'll have the details on the ears. And I don't know yet how her hair will be, but it will probably be some little puffs like this. And one thing that is cute, remember I said on last streaming, when you have things close to each other like this, this is super cute when they all kind of like cram together in the center. So I want to try as much as possible to get that feeling on her. So I want to see if I can get things very cramped together so she can look as sweet as possible. Cool. So let's do that. You guys have any questions put in the chat um i think someone asked me also in private like um what kind of tablet i use so i use this it's it's an intus 5 welcome intus 5 um i've had it for many many years and uh never felt like i needed a change because it serves me very well i did try using cintiq like the screen sculpting I'm old, so I start having some like shoulder pain, and it wasn't doing me well. So I went back to to the tablet. Cool. Uh, Metusalin. So I just said, do you use Blender? I'm study Blender. I can't say I'm a I'm pro in any level in Blender yet. I I'm studying slowly Blender. Um, I'm more comfortable in Maya for sure. I know I've been using Maya for many, many years and Blender, I just started studying this year. So yeah, it, I don't, I would never do Blender here on the stream because I'll be like, oh, how do you do that again? And then yeah, it would not be good. <laughs> so if we need to do anything, I'll probably go to Maya. Yeah, but I love Blender. It's a great tool. I've been enjoying learning it. Um, yeah, it's been good so far to me. All right, so I think I'll start on the face. So as you can see, I have the pieces separated. I'm gonna hide this hair piece here for now. And then I'm just gonna leave the what I need, which is this, the jaw, the nose, and the ears to combine. And then we can start sculpting her face. Let's do that. Um, so I'm just going to combine everything. Da -da -da, merge down. Down. Merge down. Right. So we have all in one to pull now. And what I like to do, you see it's, it's very low res, right? Because we started low res. So I like to subdivide a few times. So the DynaMesh can not keep that low res uh, look to it. So Dynamash, here we go. Um, normally I try 250 because I'm using the sphere from ZBrush. So I got used to knowing that with the sphere of ZBrush, 256 is enough for me to start sculpting. So 
because because of the scale of the sphere. If you bring me something from a different software, the scale might be different, and then you might need a different resolution on your time mesh, you know. So here we go. So you can see, you know, it's dense, but not dense enough. We can start blocking things, and then soon enough, very fast, I'm gonna do I'm going to what's the word? A zero measure. Fully. Someone said the Yuki tube said, Are you thinking about rigging when you are sculpting? Sorry if you have been asked this. Don't worry, you can ask anything. How I know I have to repeat myself. So um on this project, I'm not gonna rig. But on the next one, I do want to rig just to show you all how I do a quick rig in Maya. Very, a very easy way to do it in Maya, just using the human IK. Uh, so on this project, I'm just kind of like, this is my first project doing the stream. So I'm just trying to have fun and not think too much of technical stuff. But on the next one, if you want to see it, yes, we can play around with human IK in Maya. Cool. Uh, Blaine said, What's some advice for keeping the shape simple without getting into the details? The that's a great question, Blenza. Keep your mesh low res as long as possible. That's the easiest way to not lose control of shapes, basically. You know. Ole, Alessandra is here. She is one of my inspirations, and also glad glad to say she's one of my coworkers at Disney. And follow your, her work is beautiful. And she is very inspiring to work with. I learned a lot from her so far. So glad to see you here, Ali. Ali said, yes, we'd love to see how you approach rigging for the next one, for sure. On the next um, archetype, we can do that. So, all right, let's dive in. So like I said, I'm gonna plan where her eyes is gonna be. One way that I do that, I just like to, place a little volume like this just to kind of fill it for now what would be cool so i'm imagining her lids are closed so it's kind of like a little volume like this we can zoom out remember contrast what is the center of this character here let's think this is the center so it's kind of like similar so i'm putting the eyes right in the center that's the choice but remember if i placed it higher or lower, it would create more contrast, right? So ideally, what I could do is maybe, maybe, we can move all of this lower to give her more top head, which also gives a very baby look, which is kind of where we want to go, right? Babies have big um, cranium. Or maybe we want to do that, just give her a little more baby feeling. So I'm lowering this, so I'm avoiding this center line feeling. So we create contrast. Because by this point, if you've been watching me, you know that contrast is my, my word. So again, I'm going to lower a bit more. Just going to be a little more like a baby. Maybe. All right. I'm just going to clean a little. Again, always cleaning your model. Always making sure you look, don't lose control of shapes, right? That's why we sculpt with love in our hearts. And everything goes well. Um, Marcelo, Letícia, querida. Ah, Marcelo. <laughs> well, I said, you are my inspiration. No, you are. Love your work, Ale. Yeah, I was looking forward to the stream. Yay! <laughs> Let's make some old lady. All right. So I'm just smoothing a little uh, here. And let's block the eyes now. So again, I'm going to put the eyes right here. Can you guys feel the difference already? We just move it down a little bit. Doesn't she feel cuter? Isn't that magical? Fantastical and magical. Welcome to the family in Madrika. That's from Encanto. <laughs> All right, I'm being ridiculous. All right. Another thing that makes things cute is when you have eyes close to each other, or sometimes even more far from each other. It's kind of cute too. You know, again, like instead of trying to go like perfect here, separation, blah, 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 
I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should move forward a bit more, you know? So always think about that stuff. And the more you think, the more uh, embedded in your brain it's going to be. And then it's going to come more naturally, you know? All right. So this is going to be like kind of like her eyelids. She's going to have her eyes closed. So let's do a very quick blocking. So this is going to be like the lid. Let me push it down. The lids are going to be closed. Right now her eyes are closed without her smiling, right? It's kind of like sleepy, close the eyes like this. And then you can kind of see... There's no gesture yet. We can test it out, moving in, moving down, just to see. I think moving down looks cool. And then we can kind of give a little more arch to it. I guess when you're smiling that way, you don't see so much of the top lid like I'm doing here. Just gonna angle. Maybe give some arch like this. Let's try this for now. Okay, and I move the ton. What happens? We're getting little bits and cracks here that needs to be fixed always. So I'm just gonna be careful so I don't lose control of my shapes. One cool thing that I love to do is to establish planes. Even if I'm not gonna use the planes, oops. Even if I'm not going to use the plates, I love to establish them. So, for example, what I'm meaning is this. We have this, and then we have whoop, something like this, you see? Where you can kind of see now where the eye cavity is, where the nose bridge is, where the forehead is. So that stuff, you can block it in. I'm going to do with the bigger brush a little. And I love doing that because it helps me um again know where my planes are and uh predict bone structure not just bone right but the like structure in general so not taking care of it right let's block the mouth braided corn and said hey let's see which school would you recommend to learn molly and sculpting if you want to go to school, like go to a school physically and take classes, etc., definitely um, the school I went was Noman. And, you know, and obviously you can see that this channel is Noman's channel. I'm, but I'm not doing any propaganda here. It's just literally like what made me get into the industry was studying at Noman. Um, I only did the two year program, and after two years, I was ready to roll. And that's all you want, right? <laughs> so I do love Noman. That's why I, anything Noman asked me to do, I do it because I love working with them. And I, I'm so proud of going there. Um, but obviously, there are other schools that you can research. There is a, a resource called the Rookies that you can look at some schools there. They have like a list of, can someone post the link for the Rookies? It, you just type on th the Rookies 3D, I think. They have Anim School. Also, uh, I heard it's a good school, you know. So I would say do your research, you know, based on your budget and based on the time you have to invest to study. If you want to take a few classes, it might be a certain school. If you want to do a full program, maybe a different school, you know. So definitely do your research. But for me, my experience was a Noman. Um, I took a, a few classes back home in Brazil before I came to Noman as well. It was pretty good, but I would say like my life changed completely after uh, I joined Noman and, and start going to get into the industry, you know. So be smart with what kind of school and classes you invest for sure, because there are so many now. So you got to be very careful with your time, obviously, right? That you're going to invest your time. And, uh, yeah. For me now, at this stage, like, I I do buy a lot of classes. I love buying classes. kind of like an addiction. Uh, but I do buy a lot of classes. Um, 
not so much like full programs, but classes specific, like, oh, let's talk about action or let's talk about, you know, things like that. The one blender one that I bought is actually a Brazilian school that I bought the class. So I'm learning in this case, the class is in Portuguese. So I like. I can listen my native language sometimes and it's fun. All right, so we have that blocked out. Um, let's give a little love to this here. So again, like this is sort of like the root of the year that holds it in a way. So I'm gonna do like this thick to thin feeling like this, thick to thin, see, like this volume like this. And then maybe I'll do a little something here and that that's about it. So let's test it out, see how it goes. Because this is a thin surface, it's nice sometimes to turn on uh, back face masking. So when you're carving here, it's not gonna carve in the back, right? You guys know that? Let me show. If I turn off back face masking and start carving, you see that it's doing a volume here. So if you do turn on back face masking for the brush, it's not gonna do that, which is nice. Again, I like to model things very slow with care and love. So I'm just going to start blocking that shape. Did I answer your question about schools? It depends. It depends. You got to think with yourself, like, do I will be better off going to a school or, or I'm in a level where I just need maybe some classes or, you know, but think about it. I invested two years of my life in Omen. And that will establish my whole career, you know? So it's pretty crazy the impact of going to a, a good school would do in your life, your whole career. Um, who said it? Tim William. Oi, oh, Leticia, hi. Jean Jean. Tá fofo, Jean Jean. Que bom. Vamos embora. Uh, hi, 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 everyone. Hi, 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 hi. And uh, are you guys doing stuff on this stream or are you guys just watching? Be honest with me on the chat, please. I want honesty on this chat. This is a good opportunity, just a reminder to sculpt together, you know? And then you guys can start doing projects. And by the end of a month or a month and a half, we're going to have a project done. So don't forget that. No one is saying, no one is being honest in the chat. <laughs> okay, fine. All right. One thing I've got to be careful, you know how I'm, I'm doing like kind of like pointy stuff here? I got to think about, remember that idea of like sharp versus curves? This lady is like super, um, you know, soft and stuff. I got to think about if I'm going to, where I'm going to put sharps on her, you know? So that's why you got to, when you're sculpting and designing at the same time, you got to got to think all the time. All the time is a very thinking process much more than, than trying to copy a concept because you got to think about all the language you're deciding here, okay? So right now I did that, but I don't think it fits my ladies. So I'm just gonna round it a little more. Doesn't need to be perfect round, but I'm just gonna soft it up a little, suck it up. And then push this in, you know, do some sharps again, like if you, don't know very well what you're doing, add some structure, add some sharps to it, and then you can smooth later, you know? Something like that. Okay, I can, uh, we gotta do some zero measure, so a lot of these lumps are gonna go away. That's why I'm not too, too concerned. Um, cool. Let's see what's going on in chat. Yes, sadly, just watching far from the ceiling. No worries, man. <laughs> VR Fable said, didn't sculpt for two days, I think. Tim Williams said, Liv, what's it? do you pretend, do, do you plan to give classes again? 
Uh, yes, 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 uh, I do. This is the closest of class right now. You know, you guys watching how I think and stuff. Um, I do always want to go back to teaching, you know. It's just a matter of organizing my life structure to make that happen. Um, right now, it's not it's not a time yet for me, but yes, hopefully soon. I'll be able to teach. So you ask specifically on a revolution school. Uh, I will do uh, a some this year uh, an intensive um, cartoon course with them. So keep an eyes open for that if you're interested. Because yes, I will be working with them to do an intense course in cartoon. It will be a month and we're going to talk about posing and concepting and um, what else we're going to talk about. If anything cartoon related, you know, so shape, pose, language, study some languages from some movies. It's, it's a very fun class I taught last year and it was so amazing. And I met like really, really incredible people in that class. They're, uh, you know, they're like there as students, but they taught me so much, you know, so. All right, I'm not going to stay too long on this year. But you guys get the idea of what's going on here. And now let's figure out how we're going to block the mouth. One thing, even though her mouth is going to be closed, I do like to open the mouth bag. But before I open the mouth bag, what I want to show is this. I think what I'm going to do is something like this. You see? Like, yeah. I don't know. She's going to have a little beak thing. I had that in my mind for some reason. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to figure it out. I'm always smoothing stuff. Okay, so let's open the mouth bag. So for that, very easy. I'm just going to, whoops, not like that. I'm just going to do a little, doesn't need to be a huge hole. It just needs to separate the upper lip from the lower lip, right? So I'm just going to do that for now. Cool. And I'm going to try to put this mouth bag back as possible. So if we look from the bottom here, we can see the mouth bag. We can move a little bit. And this just to give some depth. And then we can use the inflate, flush inflate, to Inflate a little bit like this. Create some cavity in that, see? And that is enough for us to dyno mesh, oh, zero mesh, I mean. And then we're going to have the hole and we can close the mouth and make everything work. So, again, like, we don't need to overcomplicate it. Uh, one thing I will do here, just going to try to shape this cranium a little better. We didn't give her a neck, so I'll probably give a neck now before we dyno mesh. It's gonna pull from here. That's not how I should do it, but it's, it's gonna be. So, I mean, her neck's gonna be way more like that, right? Cause she has like a little hunchback feeling. So, and then we can do like that kind of like fat on the neck where we go straight to it. This, look at all angles, is 3D. So you gotta spin and spin forever until the day you die. Okay, something like that. You can make her neck a bit thinner. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what is, wait, I'm a bit lost. Hi, Leticia, best teacher I have. Hey, man, when you have a good student like you, Atia, don't, don't need much. I don't need to do much. You just shine, you know? I just let you shine, so I didn't do anything. <laughs> but it was great to have you as a student and Norman. 
and your project is was amazing. The project you did, I I still love to this day. That project is so cool. Um, love the series. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Rodrigo said, "Braba, braba" in Portuguese means like, um, well, the literal translation will be uh, angry in a way, but that's not what he meant. It's more like that you are intent, like good at your work, I guess. Well, thank you. After Ortega said, hello, Leticia, glad I have able to catch you live today. Yeah, glad to see you. Roborilla kind of looks like Baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking, you know. Baby Yoda has a lot of that feeling that I'm looking for. So, all right, but let's do rematch this and see what we get. So I'm going to go to Zero Masher. And right now we have about 200k polys on this model. I want maybe 10k for a head. It's normally what I do, 10, 15 tops. So you can type here how many polys you want. It never does exactly what you want, but let's try it. So I'm going to put here AK. And let's do, well, before we do zero measure, let's just do a few zero measure guides. So brush, Z, zero measure guides. And just to help Z brush understand where I want my flow, I just gonna block some guides here. So we can do like a guide here for the eye area. Does it do very well? Maybe, maybe not. So eh, I'm not gonna do this one. I think that's fine, whatever. All right, so I'm gonna use curve strength. If I draw guides, I can increase the curve strength so I can get, try to force the brush to follow a bit better. And that's about it, let's press it. Uh, Sandra said, good afternoon, good afternoon. Ash Blossom, are you going to sculpt the hair or are you going to make, make simulation? And I'm gonna sculpt, I'm gonna do all sculpt today. All right, so you guys can see the zero, me zero measure guide kind of gave that for the mouth. Sorry, I have a hiccup sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if the microphone got it. Um, wow, the eyes really got ugly as hell, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the important thing is the mouth because the one that I'm going to be posing, the eyes are going to be closed, so I don't care. Now, this is pretty decent. So let's call this our our topology for now okay cool and okay so now because it's so simple i'm not going to even project any detail i'm just going to keep working with this resolution so we can come here again and just mark a little better our, our structure and the mouse i'm going to subdivide by one and now we can add a bit more of those details that we had before. And uh, I still gotta figure it out this eye, but let's do the mouth first. So one thing I like to do is to separate the upper mouth to the lower mouth. One way to do that, I sometimes I like to do like a hide this and I start pressing Control Shift X and you can grow selection. And I go growing until I reach kind of like the edge of the mouth, right about here. So I would say like this is the lower part of the mouth, like this. And then I'm going to do, oops, there's a little piece of the top of the mouth. So let me just wrestle this out. And you can clean and make it pretty as well, but you know, who has time for that? So. I'm going to, now I have a poly group, you see? So if I want to close the mouth, I can just like do this and then I can smooth a little the mask. And now we can start bringing this shape up without influencing the top lip, right? So I'm gonna start trying to shape this um, as much, you know, I'm being a bit dirty, but we're gonna fix it, so something like this. Just trying to close the mouth. Leticia, why did you open the mouth if you're gonna close the mouth? That's a great question. Um, 
the answer is when you do a mouth bag, okay, so when you're sculpting, if I were just carving the mouth, it would be like this, right? I'll have the nose here, and then I'll have the mouth, and then the sculpt will do this, and this, the lower lip, whatever, right? It becomes sort of like plain like this that has no depth. When you scope the mouth bag, you're doing this, right? You're adding a mouth bag. So you create this, this complexity of two lips touching each other that creates a different lighting when they meet. And that's, that's why I do it, basically. Is it worth it? Maybe. Uh, it's worth it to me. So. Oops. But yeah, that's why I, I do mouth bags basically. Because I like knowing that the shadow is gonna be more size or more three-dimensional. I guess the word would be three-dimensional. Yeah. So I gotta look all angles to see if things are closing. You see, like I want all angles, I want the simple shape doing like this. I don't want this going on, right? So <laughs> I'm just doing that here. Making sure I have clean and you can smooth a little. You know, I think I'm gonna give her an overbite or oh, under overbite a little bit. Yeah, I think it'll be funny. Kind of smooth here. I think I close the mouth, kind of. And again, like when I move the mouth up, this piece, I kind of lost some volume here. So you got to be careful to maintain those volumes. Um, smoothing. Let's see, there's some questions here. Ash Blossom. Are you going to sculpt the hair? Oh, I already read that. Hi, Norman School from France. How are you? Very happy to see you on stream. Yay! Bonjour, comment allez-vous? Très bien, ça va bien? Uh, you can also use the the uh, topological brush and move this without moving too much the top lip, right? You guys know that. So that's what I'm doing here. Fabricio said, "Hi, Leticia. Why why use the move and not pinch to close the mouth? Uh, pinch, pinch. We'll pinch the edge loops as well." And and sometimes I don't want that, you know, because I want it. I don't want it super dirty. So that's why I decided to use move instead of pinch to close the mouth, basically. So you can see what's going on with the mouth here. Now let's make it look better. But can you guys see how the shape feels different? Like just because we have depth in the lip, it's very different from sculpting. You know, so there's something about it. I promise there's something about it. All right. Like I said, I'm going to make a very big smile. So I'm just testing it out. And when we smile very big, the philtrum, which is this, this distance here between the nose and the upper lip, this is called the philtrum area. The philtrum gets very short, right? If I smile right now, like put your finger on your philtrum and smile. It gets very short, right? So one cool thing we can do is obviously make it make it short because then it's going to have that feeling that we're smiling and we're stretching that philtrum, you know. And like I said, I want to give like a little bit of a weird kind of like a V-shaped mouth thing. I don't know if I'm sold on that idea yet, but we'll see. Um, cool. Looking from the bottom again, like I'm going to push this in. To give a little bit, remember on on a cranium, right? Um, what happened is uh, we have here. I'm gonna see here's the side of the head, right? What happened is this area where the the teeth goes. If you look from underneath, it's a very like this, right? The teeth. I'm looking from the top, so it has this shape. So if you want to have a little bit of that sh sharp shape like this. Not too much because I'm doing stylized, but I'm going to add a little more of that angle on the mouth. Okay. One thing is that the cheeks gets very high up when you smile also, right? This volume here 
it creates a, a lot more volume. I'm going to start blocking that volume here. Choo, 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 choo. Like so. Okay, we're starting to get something. Okay. I'm going to keep more. More volume. And then because the volume goes all the way up here, you lose some of the volume here. So it becomes a bit stretched, right? This gets compressed, this gets stretched. So what we can do down here is just make a little more plain, take some of the volume slowly, just to make a bit more plain. And then we start getting like something like this. This. And, uh, okay, another thing we can try to do is give a little funny chin, like a little cutesy chin here. So just going to add a bit of chin. That, again, like I don't want to change the shape too much of who she is. Like I want that simple shape that we worked on, but we can give just a little bit of chin. Yes. Yep. Um, let me read the questions. Ça va très bien, merci. J'adore. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I studied in French for a little bit when I was younger. I definitely don't speak French very well, but, you know, I can understand most of the time. <laughs> so I hope you're having fun. Um, He's a, you are a professional artist, so even at this stage, do you sketch before jumping into software? Or you directly create things in the software. I don't. I I'm a modeler, so I I like to create modeling, uh, not the common way <laughs> that people do. Obviously, a lot of people prefer to sketch first, but I I think that my brain works better when I'm modeling which again, it's not the common way of doing things, but it's just the way that it works the best for me. But if you feel comfortable drawing and you think you're more creative drawing, probably should do that. <laughs> I don't know. I just prefer doing this way, yeah. When I was uh, working as a VizDev artist, I also VizDev in 3D. I would not do one on the paper again because it's just how my brain works. Do, do you like using clay polish in your models? Yes, I do. This is kind of like a soft model, so I'm not going to use much, but um, you can see here, I love clay polish to kind of establish planes as well. So like if I want to establish the temporal area, I can just come here and, and do a little plane change on it. But yeah. This is a soft model, so it's not going to use as much. Um, I saw your method for creating eyelids using the torus for the creature. Could you possibly demo for human eye? For human eyes, I don't use as much. I use them more for creatures, to be honest, like animals, because their eyes are more on the side. So it works better. But um, yeah, we can try doing it. Uh, right, let's see with the. <laughs> She's looking pretty cute. Did you guys feel like it? We need to obviously start adding some some old lady features, right? So we might need to add some wrinkles here on the eyes when we high res it a bit more. I think it's cute. All right. Does it look like her eyes are closed? I think I think so, right? This. Right, so see, she's like very sweet and happy. Okay, again, try not to lose control of things. How do you keep model looking feminine? Well, uh, the best option for that is to study uh, what are the differences in anatomy of what makes something more feminine, something more masculine. So, uh, there are many things. The hip shapes are different. The, even the skull shapes are a bit different on the male and a female. Uh, so I would say study those. 
Um, and you will start knowing those cues that makes like, oh, if I emphasize this, it's more masculine. If I soften this, it's more feminine, you know? So I'd say uh, focus on that if you if you really want to be good at that, which is very important uh, uh, skill to have, being very honest, you know? It's on those uh, changes of nuances of, of things that's going to make something more feminine or masculine. I'll give a little bit of something back here, not too much. Okay. Cool. Um, ba -ding -ba -ding. Let's see. All right, I think it's time to high res one more time and then we can give her maybe some eyebrows. So for the eyebrows, we can do, I'm gonna high res it. So I'm gonna go one level up. And then I'm going to just draw a mask of where I want the eyebrows to be. So maybe something like, I want tiny eyebrows. I know that because it, it's very cute. Check it out. Or always good to try different things. Maybe a big eyebrow. I think I'm going to go with the big. What do you guys think? Or tiny. I'm gonna try the tiny one first. We can make it bigger if we want. So I mask like this, and then I go to extract, and I say extract, and it's gonna create that. Um, it's gonna create this volume. We gotta say accept, and then it creates this object on the different subtool. Now, one thing I like to do the topology is like like this, which we don't want. So I'm just gonna do a quick zero measure. Boop. And then we have better topology. We can do one more just to, yeah. So now we have the brows to play with. Obviously they're too far away. So this. And because I want her sweet, we probably want to do a little more of this shape, right? It's kind of like a sweet shape like this. So I'm gonna make this tick to thin feeling. So it's like that. And here. And then on the bottom here, we can just push this up a bit to mash match the expression of the brow that we just made. Cool. We can also rotate this to test it out more. I want the beautiful arc. Like that. And then we can figure it out how we match underneath. Something like that. Um, big is better. Oh yeah, well let's try big later. Um, I mean not later. Um, soon. But um, yeah, I think you're right. It might be better bigger. This and then Tim said, "What? What's the name of the program that you can draw on top? It's called Epic Pen. This little tool here. So if you go to Google and type Epic Pen, it's a free." free thing. There is a paid version that does some stuff, but you can download the free version. Will you put some pearls feet around the eyes? Full show. Full show. She needs to look older, right? She doesn't look that old yet. So here I'm going to give a little bit of mark, a little chin thingy. Like this. And then let me force a bit more that smile. There's some stuff we're gonna to have to work obviously. The cool thing, remember that in the beginning I separate lower lip from top lip, so we can isolate the lower lip, for example, and then I can come here and sharp a little more the edge of that lip. Like 
in here. And uh, you can see that I don't have the thickness of the lip yet, so we can add it from the inside. Does it matter? Anyone's going to see it? No. But it's the right thing to do. I'm joking. It doesn't really matter, but it just makes me feel better knowing that it's there. Okay, and then we can invert. And from the top view again, we can give the thickness from the upper lip. Just like this. Something like this. That ours. Uh, okay, so yeah, so the upper lip is like this. And now we have a little more dense structure. I can see here there's a gap going on. So with the move topological, it's going to come. Well, I'm going to mask. That might be easier. Yeah. So that's why it's so good to create that group before because it makes uh, adjusting the mouse so much better and uh, easy. This, I think I'm gonna this guy up a bit more. And like I said, I want a little of an overbite on her so we can move all this forward and a little bit of this back. So she has like a, that kind of vibe on it. Mm -hmm. See, that's kind of cute. Okay, so I'm going to tarp it here. The transition still has some gap. Let me just check it out what's going on here. Might be missing a little volume, maybe. Let me see. Yeah, I just need to close it better. Yes. From the bottom. One thing we can try to do is that very, very cartoony um, corner, which is like this, right? If I were to draw, I'll come over here and then we will do this, right? That's very cartoon. So we can try to mimic that in 3D and see what happens. So uh, a way we can do that is we can work a little bit on the shape. This corner shape add a bit more volume like this and uh, try to force it that meat to create that starting to it. Another way we can try is to sharp with with the sharp brush try to mark a little like this and looking from here we can figure it out like okay this is going to go low this is going to go over right to fold it on top let's see we're starting to get it see so it's a little bit of a of some movement so you, you gotta imagine that these fold it's literally folding to the corner we can take the corner and move in more see and it starts folding very well and now we have the kind of very graphic um corner of the mouth it's got to fix some stuff obviously but that's kind of how I do it, the, the graphic thing. We can always bring more volume here with the bigger brush just to emphasize that. Cool. This. I don't know what the hell I'm doing wrong here. Okay, I'm going to close this because it's driving insane. So. I'm going to push this down. With the move topological. Oops, move topological. Just going to push this in here a little. And then I'm going to push this out a little. Because I think there's some weird thing that we did. Turn it together. Now I can just take this. Um, any questions so far? Rob said, all this subtle adjustment snowball into such a great scope. Do you uh, talk 
Okay, well, ability up to experience and practice. Or do you do you think it's taste? No, I think it's a lot of practice and a lot of observation. You know, obviously, yes. If you like that corner like I do, yes, I, I think it's a good taste. So I try to uh, implement that. But I think a lot is observing all those sculptures or other two D art, and then try to mimic that uh, in three D and figure it out how to do that in three D. You know. So look at that, it feels meaty, right? This volume here, feels very like, it's doing this, right? And it's like really feeling like wrapping her around her mouth. And uh, that's why sometimes it's, it's even nice to emphasize that stuff, to make sure it's there for you. And uh, now I'm doing some design changes. I'm putting the eyes closer. And I'm trying to emphasize the mouth again, like that V shape that for some reason I put in my head would be cool to do. Uh, so something like that. A little pretty cool, right? Um, on the top lip, I did not sharpen the lip here, the, the, the lip area. So I'm just gonna go with the brush and like sharp a little. This. Why am I doing it? Because it changed how the light reacts. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm doing it. All right, cool. So let's think about it. Look also how it, it has a certain flow, you see? Things are like connecting, you see? So uh, this goes down, this mask goes up, and it wraps around it. It's just like there is a fluidity that you you want to try to add to your model, you know? This. Cool. And then um, I'm just gonna, again, like start with finding more the planes of things. And let's see, do you have any Gumroad art station tutorials? I do have a Gumroad um, about head block count. If you're interested, I will put it right here so you guys can see. Let me open the browser to show. Uh, it is Gum Road 3D and Joy, which is the name of my, I don't know, brand, whatever. <laughs> it's this one, 3D and Joy. So there's two videos. One is free for breathing exercises before starting start working in 3D. And then there's one that it's about head blockout. So I'll, I'll give you this link here. If you want to check it out. I highly recommend no, it. Fun. You're going to have fun, that's for sure. And learn some stuff, hopefully. So. You see that I never stay in one area too long. That's a good practice that I learned to kind of like bring things together at the same speed instead of getting hyper focused on like getting the eyes right, the mouth right, the ears right. I just kind of go bouncing around and that makes everyone, everyone, else, everything come together uh, in the same pace kind of feeling. Anyway, I'm not liking that ear at all. I don't know what I'm doing. So. I'm going to try to shape this a little different. Yeah, I'm gonna give a little pointy feeling. We'll see. I like that. All right. So let's check it out. Um, like I said, I'm gonna try with the longer uh, brow. Might be cool for old lady. Just a longer brow. Like this. Oh yeah. That's better. And who said uh, her head block out course amazing. I can block out head so fast than that. That's right. <laughs> I mean it is a technique that I've been using for many years and it helped me be able to design in 3D, you know? If you're someone that wants to do that, I that head blockout technique is 
for me, is the way that I found to, to be able to do those things. Always rotating, seeing if there's anything weird, like if there's something going in like this, it's kind of weird. So I'm always rotating and making sure things are clean and pretty. So give a little more chin. Look at this profile. That's pretty cool, right? Check it, check it out. It feels pretty old lady, right? The profile here. So, uh, all right, cool. So before we start adding wrinkles and stuff, I think I'm just going to lay a little bit more with her hair just so we can get a feeling of who she is through the hair. Turn on the hair volume here. Obviously, it's not working the way anymore. Yep, that's right. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for her hair very well. I was thinking something similar to this. You know, it has like some side hair like this. But in the front, it might be cool if she had a little... Nah, it looks pretty cool like this, to be honest. Like just a little volume like this. Can give her a hairline. Like so. And then this goes down like so. What do you all think? I'm just doing that. I'm not sure yet, but I mean, simple, but it works. Any ideas? Let's put some color so we can feel the character. I'm not sure, like, really the color palette I want for her. I, we know that the creature is cyan and purple. I was thinking some pink for her skin. Atia said maybe bigger, higher on the top. Yeah, let's try that. Maybe a bit bigger like this. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Side hair is going to conflict with the big ears. Simple is best. True. Yeah, let's keep the 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 little puffy on the bot in the back, or else we're gonna get some like side hairs here. Yeah, it might conflict with the ears. Read. I might do some like tiny little hairs, just kind of like breaking a little. But maybe her hair is all combed like this, you know, to the back. So I think that's, that's a good way. All right, let's put some color. So I was thinking of making her pink. So, but not like skin pink, but like real pink, something like, like this. We put on her hands, something like this. What do you guys think? Does it look cool? It's a nice pink. Be like this, and then her hair. We can instead of being white, we can put like a blue white, really, like bluish white. I like everything more saturated for some reason. But uh, let me. I really want to be at my pick right now and sculpt. You should. You should, man. All right, I'm going to put this blue to her hair, or should I do it white? Lighter blue. I think the white is pretty good, but I'm going to just do a little blue white. I think that's what I'm going to do. Cool. All right, uh, the brows, I'm going to put the lighter blue as well. Maybe a little darker blue, like that, saturated. Uh, white, blue, pink, I think it works, yay. I think so too. And then, one thing that always makes me happy is I picked the pink, right? So I chose the pink of the skin that I gave. 
And then we can um, paint some more saturation on the tip of the ears, maybe with purple or maybe with orange. Oh yeah, orange looks cool. Like that, too much. Maybe a little brighter orange. And then we can give a little bit on her nose, a little bit on her cheeks, a little bit on the chin. And for now, for now, uh, I'm just gonna put for her clothes just some neutral color. Just because I don't know which color I'm gonna do, maybe green? Uh, maybe some this such green. No, pink, pink, and uh, I'm gonna put a gray for now because I don't want to think about her, her clothes yet. Why well, is not painting? I can't hear about now. I'll keep like this the wings, let's keep the pink as well. All right. Cool, so what I was going to do. All right, the hair, okay, the hair is decent. I, I was thinking during the week of giving her a little cape. And then here there's gonna be like a leaf holding it. And, and then we can do like a cape going like this. And uh, I think that could be pretty cool. This is a, like her little boobies and then a little, foot poking through here. What do you all think? Navy or brown, I like that idea. Um, so let's make a little cape very fast for her. I think it's gonna help to get the mood going of stuff. Um, so the way I'm gonna do the cape, I don't know. I think I'm gonna start from cylinder, maybe. Yeah, exactly. And I'm gonna get a cylinder and I'm gonna delete the tops. Oops. So I'm just gonna leave this even. And I'm gonna delete the front like so. This. Hey, I don't have symmetry. Sorry. Okay, something like this, just for a start. And there's a lot of divisions going on here. So with the Z Mahler, I'm just gonna delete a few. So I'm gonna delete every other one, just so it's easier to manage. Doop, doop, all right, beautiful. Now, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe her cape is a whole leaf thingy. I like that. Let's try that. All right, so I'm gonna kind of shape what I want. So this is gonna be the part that connects to the neck bit. So you can see I'm working pretty fast and dirty just because I'm, again, I'm trying to find the shape. So it's gonna wrap around her neck here. And try. Shit, we can isolate just so I can push this stuff in more so the border just kind of to uh, hug hug her neck this and then this damage loop that's going against what we're trying to do so i'm gonna mask this guy and then this one we can push it out The dirty, but we're concepting, so we're trying to figure out things. This, I'm imagining her neck here, her arms are gonna be here. A smoothie. Yay! <laughs> that looks pretty cute. So here is the part that's gonna connect in the front, right? Maybe I'm gonna move her arms. And more. That's gonna be great. Yeah. 
think about it here. If you want to see what's going on, right, with the shapes, you can always do a um, transparency, and you can kind of see what you're doing. You all know that. Okay. So I can come here, make a bit cleaner. And um, here now I can see where my body is ending, so I can push this more. Push this forward. Cape maybe, yeah, it's going over her arm a bit like this. At the bottom, we can create a little bit of shape. Like so. Good thing also, it's always to save. Let's save my file. Let you comment somewhere about your uh, going to Disney. What did you do to get in? Um, sculpt. Oh, hi. No place, Gus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, my journey to Disney. <laughs> It was a painful um, but worthy journey. Um, you know, Disney, if you ever talk to me for a second, you know that Disney was always been my dream to work. And it was always the reason I came to the US to study, yada, yada. You know, it took me seven, eight years to get to the dream <laughs> since I came to the US, but it was so worth it because. I love working at Disney. I love the style. I love the stories. So I'm pretty happy. You know, again, work is not therapy. It's not like all my meaning in life is set by working at Disney. That's, that's not me at all. You know, but the fact that I'm so connected through my childhood with those Disney stories and the impact they had in my life, of course, working there. Uh, means a lot to me, right? But again, I don't want to, uh, you know, you, I still enjoy doing my personal work because that's what makes me grow as an artist, right? In the company, you have a, a collective vision, right? It's a collective vision that you are part of that vision, a small part of it. Your personal work, it's your vision. You are all part of it. So there is a different um, happiness that happens from that. So I like both happiness. I love being part of a big vision and contributing and knowing that we all going to make something amazing and crazy. But I also like just expressing myself, my own vision through my own personal work. Yeah. But my journey to get there, just a quick, quick thing was... Um, like I said, I came to the US, I went to Noman as a student. I did the two year program there, met crazy people, amazing people, made great connections. Um, but it took me a while to get to Disney just because for modeling, the team is pretty small. So if someone doesn't leave the team, basically there's no room to hire more people, right? So I had to wait for someone to decide to leave the company so I could get a small chance for them to like me and want me at the studio, basically. That's what happens, you know? So, yeah. I just kept studying. I just kept my head up. And I uh, kept doing my personal work and having fun, whatever I was before. I, every work I had, I worked, I had so much fun, like, I, I, I say this all the time, but Blizzard was one of the places I learned the most. I work with such an amazing uh, group of people. And, uh, you know, at DreamWorks, it, it, uh, I learned so much of that as well, you know. So, yeah, I kept my eyes on the prize for sure. I was always paying attention if Disney was going to have a hire. But I also had so much fun the places i went you know and we'll probably go back to any of those places if i have to because i had great experience 
But I'm pretty happy at Disney. I don't want to leave. Only if they throw me away. Um, cool. All right. So we got a, a, a little, um, I think this looks pretty cool, right? And, and if this green, it's working pretty well. Um, cool. The idea of making it a leaf, we could make like a pointy thing here in the back that could be a little point part of the leaf. We can think about it. Um, cool. So it's kind of it. You know if the orange on the pink worked very well. Do you guys have any other suggestions to create some contrast painting on it? Not sure yet. Um, all right, maybe we can detail the head a little bit more again. Oh yeah, I was going to give her some some little old lady boobs. I think. She turns out just a little. Maybe she doesn't need it. Maybe I can just do this. Push this down and then push this forward and yeah, it's called the the little thingy here. She can have a little bit. Oh. Love those tiny wings. Adorable. <laughs> Thanks. It was someone has idea here on the chat the last time. Someone had the, the idea. Making the tiny wings. Like it. Uh, how does it feel to be an industry, industry professional? Do you certainly sing and dance when I was... Yes. I definitely sing and dance when I was looking because I still cannot believe I work at Disney. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, yeah. And I joined Disney during the pandemic. So I never actually like... I don't have a desk there. I don't have a place. So sometimes I'm, I wake up and I'm like, is this real life like you know like i don't know if it's all made up in my brain i don't think it is <laughs> but definitely um some days i'm just like what the hell i work at disney this is insane you know yeah it's pretty it's pretty crazy <laughs> so yeah i enjoy a lot uh uh, doing cartoons in general and get paid for it and get paid for it in amazing stories you know that's all we all want right yay entity said then she's looking cute that means we're going the right way <laughs> you know how like uh, old ladies they have they have like a little more of the neck, kind of like this meat here, right? The, the actually the skin sags a little, right? So if this was a young lady, we would push this up. When she was young, she was probably like this, right? She had a very defined definition here. For those of you, like imagine her jaw is here, right? So her jaw, and then in theory, this area here, right? which is called the digastric plane. Digra digastric plane is this area underneath here, the, the chin. This area sags, right? When you get older, when you younger, she would be something more like that, right? And then the neck will come and then the neck will come here. So you will look much younger. So. So I'm just going to sag here in the center a little. We can give some rolls. We can do a little bit of like this. Some little fat rolls. Just a little bit. And uh, I don't know if I like it, but I think I'm going to do just maybe one like this. Might be cool. Not too much. Yeah, it's fine. Cool. Um, all right, let's add some wrinkles. Little locket for the road. Yeah, we can do that. What's your favorite music or musician? Um, I'm, I, I normally don't listen to music when I'm working. 
it's because um you know my brain doesn't doesn't work that way i need to be fully on concentrated on what i'm doing um but when i'm not working i do love brazilian music so there is a style in brazil called mpb which is a very um if you type if you guys are interested and if you are but if you're interested in listening to mpb some of my favorite singers are Marisa Monti, um, Marijita, um, Aitano. <laughs> but you guys probably don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, the Brazilian people, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, this looks like a, a Miss Claw, huh? this Santa's Claw's wife. <laughs> She's sweet. Um, some Brazilian music, it's, it's what I normally listen. And obviously, I'm going to say something that you all probably already know. I listen to a lot of Disney soundtracks. So, Moana, uh, Pocahontas. I'm just a Disney freak, to be very honest, you know. So I listen a lot to those uh, Disney songs. All right, one thing I like to do at this stage is to force things, break a little bit, just to see if I can find something fun. So what if her smile was way bigger or her eyes were way closer together? That's pretty cool. What you guys think? More like that. Oh, that's cool. So when you get your shapes, your uh, secondary shapes in, just test it out. Like, what if her ears were much bigger? That's kind of cool too, right? She had small like this. So don't be afraid of this, like, what, especially on the secondary shape part, I really love to start testing things out. Like, what if it was much more, oh, look, at that. so cool. Look, before, kind of, you know, and then I push this up and it looks so much more like an old lady, like this. Wow, I think I'm gonna do that. What do you all think? Push that up. Yeah. Look at that. Again, like I'm I'm putting everything cramped together in the center, which makes things in general cuter. So I'm just gonna lower this a bit. Make this higher, maybe. Yeah, she looks a bit more in peace, peaceful. Obviously, we got to think about one thing here about the, the eyes. I didn't do much yet. Uh, if we look like this, uh, we need to think that there is eyeball here, right? So maybe we can give a little more of a volume going on. So I'm just going to add a bit more volume looking from the top. I'm trying to give a little more curvature to it. So we can push it out. Yeah. You see how it's more 3D now? Yeah. Benjo said, lady, give me all your cookies. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's some internet stuff. I'm not sure, but I never give my cookies. That's my husband. I am. I do not give cookies. Cookies are mine. I love cookies. Is that what you mean? <laughs> Might be sounding like an old lady, but no, I do not share cookies, friends. Cookies are mine. Oh, you're asking her for the cookies. Yes. Okay. Never mind. You you can ask her. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. I thought, you know, it's funny. I don't know if you guys saw the first. Sorry. <laughs> yes. She can give cookies for sure. Um, I saw the... um. When I was blocking out the idea of the lady um, without thinking her as a creature before, right? So I put some baguette, it's like some bread she's going to be giving. But I thought since she's more like a creature now, sort of like a fairy thingy, I thought she could be holding some bamboo shoots, you know? And those creatures that just love chewing on bamboo. 
What do you all think? All right, this is looking pretty cute. All right, let's think about what can we do to make her look older. So the best way to think about is to look at older women, right? So for example, the nasal labia fold, which is this fold here, oops, this fold here is called the nasal labia fold, right? So right now we don't have that super defined, you know, you know but it would be something going like this which goes from the corner of the nose to the corner of the mouth and does this fold here. There's also here a, the, the, the double chin that I can play still. We can look here at some of crow's feet. You know, there's an eye bag. In this case is not going to work much, but we can definitely do crow's feet. And we add some wrinkles here in the forehead. So I imagine here some crow's feet like this. And then we can have some wrinkles on the forehead. Maybe I'm going to test it out the nasal labial. I'm not sure. But that would definitely make her look older. Hey, thank you, Harper. Harper said so much appeal. That's what we hope for, right? When we're designing. <laughs> yeah, that's all you want when you're designing stuff for someone to say that. So I appreciate it. Because since I'm the sculpting and designing at the same time, it's kind of hard sometimes to know if I'm going the right thing. So, yeah. All right, let's add. I'm going to control D one more time. And hopefully, that will be enough for us to add some, some see. So, let me define a bit better here the eyes, the lid. Whoops, turn this off lid here and then we can do some crow's feet going up like this we can do a little bit of a volume here always think of 3d right i'm compressing this area so i need to have some volume in that area right so let me compress a bit better you see how like there is some volume here for the wrinkle. Might be doing too, too big, but I'm gonna leave it for now. We can do one more, I guess. One more go like that. I don't know. I'm gonna go slow. So we added that one. We can try the nasal label. I don't know if it's gonna work well because her smile is so big but we could certainly do a little more here of her smiley just sort of like imagine this mass is going down here still so it's always nice to think about the mass the compression right so i can do something like that she's definitely looking older right Sometimes with some Disney stuff, they do this, which is interesting. Like this mask does something like that. Uh, if you look at Mickey Mouse when he smiles, right? We have Mickey here, let's say, and then his nose. When he smiles, there's a little cheek, cheek thing going on here. And then Mickey smiles. Can you guys see what I'm saying? Just imagine Mickey's eyes here. Here's his nose. And then it creates this little cheek, cheek volume here. So we can try to maybe force that a little more. Just creating more volume in this area, maybe. To have that cheek feeling. It's pretty cute. Yeah, see, looking from the top, I feel like we could have more volume coming this way. Last year. All be more volume. Especially around here. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else can we do to make her look old? Remember one of those days we talk about the ripple effect of nature? So this shape becomes this shape ripply, right? 
So we're gonna do some of the this stuff here. So let's try it out. Let's compress this and create some some forehead folds. This well, again, like I'm pushing it in. Look, push it in. Um, but we can go here and add the little volume we fold just so it feels more 3D, more compressed. And this stuff is actually good to do without symmetry because it looks more natural. But yeah, remember we did on the creature also a little fold on the ear. I think it would be cute if she had it too. It's a little fold here where the ear comes out. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. And more volume to the ear here on the base. Thanos chin. What is a Thanos chin? Let me see. I do not remember Thanos, to be honest. Thanos. Let's see. Ew. No. Why you want to do that to my lady? <laughs> that's horrible. Wait, that definitely feels like a creature, but I don't know. <laughs> I think it works better on Thanos. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We could. I'm going to mark a little more here the chin. A bit deeper. You're laughing at me. You're suggesting some crazy shit. <laughs> you can do that to my old lady. All right, cool. Now, remember, I think in some stream, I showed you guys this, this awesome tip, which is you go inside and with the pinch brush, you pinch your details so it feels very clean and sharp from when you look. So I'm just going around and pinchy. And this in general makes things look pretty clean when you go to the front view. So all the details that are going in, I'm pinching right now. So right now, what's going on here? Yeah, we have this here, I can pinch a little. And when you go back, it looks crisper, you see? Because when you pinch from the inside, it, it's different than trying to pinch from the front view for some reason. Something like that. It's nice, right? Maybe her uh, here, her brows could make a little bit of a volume break as well. We can make it like create this sort of like volume here with of skin, you know, like skin. You, you you can see what I'm doing. Like the skin is is compressing up here. So right now I have this, and then we have this, which is the eyebrows skin compression. You see? Please. Did something weird here. So each polish, I'm just gonna polish here because I did something. Rise. And now we have that compression there. See? Go ahead, go ahead. She looks elderly enough. Let's just look at some more reference. Well, Mother Coco is a lot going on. So maybe not, but see. Yeah, the nasal labia is a big one, but our smile is so big. One thing we can do, maybe, maybe, to mark here. Yeah, that could be cool. Mark a little bit. So it's kind of like this. Uh, yeah, I'll leave a little bit. Just move. All right. Any suggestions of what should be the SSS color for this? Maybe it could be purple I tried, orange I tried. 
Yes, I'm going to try some red, red color. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to go with red. But, I mean, it's more predictable, but I think it looks good. We can put a little bit here. Nose. It's too strong. Just going to lower the intensity. And then I can go around. So giving some redness to some areas. On the chin. You can give like almost like she has a tan from the sun, you know, like that. Hehe. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, but, um, what else? One thing that helps, we could just paint. This is a cheat, right? But we can paint inside the crevices that are going in with a bit of red. And then that gives a little, like, a beautiful occlusion feeling to it. So we can go a little bit here. And then we can go on the forehead. Since she's on the sun all the time, like maybe her forehead can be more red as well. It's a bit more on the nose. And then on inside the wrinkles, you can just add more redness to it. Like I'm doing strong now, but you guys got the idea. That and then yeah. We could also old old people they tend to have their skin texture, right? The skin um will have more, uh, you know, dots and, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More um, aged skin, right? So one thing we can do is to take like a dark red and get a spray brush, sort of like this spray uh, alpha and go around and just add some some of that skin quality for old people like this. See, around, so she's gonna have a little more complexity on her skin. Here, and then, we can go to a darker tone and do a little bit around the nose there. I'm gonna turn off symmetry for that because I don't want it to feel symmetrical, but we can add a bit more here in the cheeks, a bit on the chin, a bit on the forehead, you know, some more details on it. You see how just that also made her feel much older? Because now she has a bit more complexity on her skin. Like that. Yeah, I think you're right, Felipe. Felipe said, I think the wrinkles on the eyes are going to disappear when we put the skin shader in Marmoset. So I might have to emphasize more, a little more. You are right, as usual, Felipe. I'm going to have to add a bit more volume here. Also, I wanted to, oops, I'm doing all this without symmetry. That's not smart for now. Gonna add a bit more, and also I think I'm gonna pull this up down just to feel more compressed. Ah, all right. I'm gonna do con. Yeah, I think we we get into a nice plate. I mean, our creature has nostrils, so maybe she deserves some nostrils. We can put here. I'm gonna make it kind of shallow. Yeah, it doesn't hurt, right? I have a little monster. We can be a bit bigger just because older people, um, the nose, your nose and your ears, they never stop growing, right? So when you grow old, you tend to get bigger ears and bigger nose. So it's be better. Cool. All right. So we got the face for now. I feel like it needs a bit more um, 
depth to the eyes, but I'm I'm going to move forward and maybe we can work a little more on the on the hands. Figure out her hands. So I'm going to dynamesh this so we can start working. Yeah, we'll keep the eyes closed. She's kind of happy just feeding them with the eyes closed, kind of like, yay, you know, kind of thing. So, yes, I will keep the eyes closed. Oh, one thing you got, you just gave me an idea is to put a little line for the eyelashes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my, my brow here. First is too thick, right? Just make it thinner. Ooh, what did I do? And here. And then we can make some lashes. I'm making this much harder than it needs to be. But what I need is just this. So we can shape with the eyes a little lash, lash thingy. And here, because the eyelashes, if the eyes are closed, uh, open or closed, eyelashes are so good to make things feel graphic, right? Because the eyelashes tend to make this graphic shape different from the skin, right? The read is different from the skin, which makes it very easy to read what the eyes are doing, you know? So maybe she has some long lashes like this. And then you can do a little little curve like this. <laughs> so sweet. Uh, I also didn't paint her lips. We could paint her lips a little darker. So I'm going to isolate the mouth. I'm going to get this color and just make a little darker. And we can use the paint brush and just paint. Oops, wait, I up there. How does it take you to finish characters at Disney? Well, it's all depends on the complexity of the character, to be honest. Um, there's no like right formula. We kind of like have an idea of how long we normally take, right? When you do enough modeling, you kind of know how long you would take doing something. But it's always a surprise. Like you never know. But in general, I would say that Disney gives us a pretty good amount of time to work on things and, and find our characters. So. Yeah, I mean, some other studios might give way less time, I would say. But at Disney, they're pretty good about giving time for us to work. All right, so now we can just go here and clean this mess. Verse, let me see if I did anything I shouldn't. Yeah, so we can read her mouth better. I mean, it's not the most beautiful paint job, but I'm just gonna paint the lower lip is the one that's showing the most. So I'm just gonna paint it a little better here. So we. See what's up. All right. Ooh. Let's work on the hands now a little bit. It might be too dark that color, but we can change later. The important thing is that it's reading pretty decent from far which is what I want. Right, so for the hand, going back there, we're almost out of time. But at least we define, remember I said uh, in some streaming, I said 
the steps, right? It's like the most important part of the body is the head. The most important part of the head are the eyes. And so here's the body layer, body. So the head is the most important part of the body. The eyes is the most important part of the head. And the hands are the second most important part of the body. Do you guys get that? So let's do the hand. So I'm going to do some dynamashing here. Dynamash. Again, like I know the two something will do the job. So now we can see what's going on. I need a, just a bit more 250. Oh. Yeah, that's decent. And now we're going to do a zero measure. We might just want to clean a little here before. Just thinking about the hand anatomy here, giving a bit of volume. And then let's do a quick zero measure. Check it in. Let's see. What I want here is to be able to isolate the finger like this, for example, make a, a polygroup, isolate this finger, make another polygroup. Um, we hide this one and then we can have polygroups to isolate the fingers and it's working pretty well the zero mesh as you can see maybe not here here it work like more like this which is not perfect but we can still paint the mask out so i can take some of this mask and make a polygroup here wow and um now we have semi-decent polygroups to work with. Cool. Uh, yeah, let's think about the hand. So, I do you find interesting that it's kind of going pointy? I don't know if I should put some nails or if I should just keep the shape kind of going pointy like this at the end. It's kind of intriguing, like creature-like for me so i'm gonna keep that right now why she have only three fingers only god knows <laughs> it's just the design the design okay so i'm just thinking about some regular hand anatomy right so we have this bed we have this bed like this and then we have one doing like so right one crease so we can come here and crease right about here where the the hand you know uh, fold and then we can do that crease here and then we can separate these two guys here and that's pretty much everything we need for the hand we can just create some volumes obviously but also, we can make it thinner a bit, might be too thick. And then from this side, oops. From this side, we could think about like defining one big knuckle, the main knuckle here. Uh, we could give some knuckle for sure, because she's an old lady, right? So you would imagine her hand is not super soft. You can see some bony line marks. So in general, with fingers, right, we have the knuckles. And then it comes and the knuckle here. And in between the knuckles, if you put a crease, it, it makes your hand feel older, right? So I, we can play with adding the knuckles and then taking a little bit here on the crease and then add the knuckle volume here. Less fingers equals smaller hands, smarter, smaller, cuter for sure. 
that means also you need to do less finger work, which it's always good. So let's say that the middle knuckle, right, the crease is going to be right about here. So when her hands like that, just thinking about some gesture to give a bit more anatomy than we would expect. Okay, again, always trying to keep, still keep it simple, but it's always nice when you add hints of anatomy, you know? So here, same thing, like her knuckle for this one. This one is kind of like broken a bit. Let me rotate out. Oh, so wait, she, oh yeah, that's kind of fine, actually. I think I just need to move this down more. And here, so here we have that going on. So you can see here, like if I, I'm going to subdivide so we can start adding some more detail. But the step beyond is giving all your characters mittens so you only have a thumb. Yes. <laughs> That is the dream. Ah, for sure. All right, so I'm trying to figure out this finger, what's, what's going on with it. So I think what's going on is, I guess the fold would be here, right? The area that folds. Yeah, I think that's what it would be. See, like this. Yeah. Moving this in. And that, that falls here. Again, here we can um, establish that plane here where the knuckle live, and then we can mark here the, the wrinkle. Uh, one thing we can do to make it maybe a bit squarish read from the top like this let's try it this what i'm doing is like why did you think about doing this because a lot of cartoon characters they have that they have the top plane separate from the bottom of the hand so i'm just testing i'm not saying it's gonna work on this character per se but i always like to test it out and and see how it reads so if we isolate now it's pretty it reads pretty good actually so I'll keep it like that. Again, we can take the same idea and, and do some aging on the hand. So I'm going to put the same color as my face. And then I'm picking the red here of the ear. And with the spray brush, I'm just going to go around and add some, you know, texture to her hand. Something like that. I think that's it for the hand. So we can play around just defining this more as a sleeve. So if I push this in a bit, I kind of feel like it's a sleeve on her now. You know, I'm running out of time. I'm going to have to ask Norman to have longer streams because he goes by so fast. Um, Yay. Pedro said, hey, look, this is looking so cute on her face. Thank you so much. It's a, a nerve-wracking process to concept in front of people, I'm going to be honest. But it's going to pay off because I'm going to get better at it, you know? And um, the only way to it is through it. No other way. All right, so I'm gonna make it clean for now. I don't know what color her shirt would be. Someone said like a navy color. Maybe let's try it. Uh, navy color is this, right? If I'm not mistaken. Something like this. Let's try it. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, that's pretty cool. Um, Pedro said, what about her having a big pocket in front of her clothes with a little pet inside? That could be awesome. Yeah, I like that idea. 
the little lighter navy. This longer streams, yes. Um, I think. Let me darken the screen a bit. Um, maybe not. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out the palette later because you know it's a lot to deal with at once. But um, and also I need to figure out her palette with the creatures, right? Because she's not alone. So wait, did I do that? Go back here. I'm going to move the hair back a bit more. So I need to figure it out, the palette. I don't, yeah, I'm going to have to work on that. So don't worry too much about the colors yet. We are going to figure that out. Um, maybe a baby creature, yeah, on the pocket. That could be cool, right? Maybe she has like a front pocket or like a pouch, you know, where there's like a little creature here. That could be cool. I need to make her little shoes. Let's make that now. We have time for it. So um, the shoes are going to be so hard to make, which is going to get us here, like so. And then we're going to crop half of it. Bop. And that's the shoe for now. <laughs> so um, let's put it down here. The shoes are going to be like this. Just for context, right? Um, gonna mask the bottom here. I think I'm gonna go a bit over the stream today if you guys don't mind, just so we can have some, just a little more fun if they, I'm sure that it would be fine. <laughs> All right, so here's her shoe. I'm gonna make a little bit of pointy, not too much, remember she's very round. So here's going to be the heel. And that's about it for now. So let's hide that under her clothes. So one foot will be here. Like this. Spin a little out. I'm going to do a mirror. Cool. And like this. And then we can get here and just do a little they got the clothes going like over it. Um, might be too close to each other. Let's push it out a bit. I think that's better. So we can push. Just covering a bit. And then maybe we can put like a little dark gray print on it. Oh, it looks kind of weird. Uh, I don't know if I'm digging it. Um, maybe just a little tip. That might be cuter. Yeah. Also, I need to sharpen clothes itself. We didn't dynamesh yet the body. Um. Yeah, let's kind of mesh the body. Now merge down. Okay, so I merged down only this piece. Okay, I'm going to keep the arm separate because we don't see the arm connection. So it's easier to pose it later. I'm just going to do this. And we know this is just like some clothes. So we definitely don't need this area. <laughs> My dog is going crazy behind me. Um, okay, let me dynamesh. Again, I subdivide, kind of mesh, I'm gonna put about two something like this. We can clean a bit. I'm going to do a little bit of her breasts volume here. She doesn't have much, so just a little bit like this. We can shape this much like so. And then let's do a zero mesh on this. 
So just for now, I'm going to sharp this edge here because I know I want this separate. So, and what's the zero measure? Half, we have about 400, that's a ton. So I'm going to go slowly going half and half. And while that, uh, Jace asked, you had an idea last week about pushing the knees through the dress. Yeah, we can do that. I think that might be cool. Let's test it out. So Jace, you're from Jama Jamaica? Is that? Is that it? Okay, let me see here. I'm going to keep zero matching. I think I'm going to go over just to finish this dress block out and then we can continue next week. But we're almost done. We're so close. All right, let's try this again. It's going to go close. Yeah, from Jamaica. Nice. Have you ever been here in the US or Brazil? Okay, I think this resolution, I'm going to delete this bottom part. So, you know, it becomes like, it's going to be empty for her body, actually. So I might duplicate this just to have a mouse underneath. And uh, in this one, I'm going to delete the bottom part, which is, so one way to do it that's very easy. You can get the lasso too, and then I'm going to select this loop. And I'm going to do out a group. So it's going to separate these two groups. I can isolate this one, delete, done. And now we have this. So this mess here, I, I'm saving. I don't know why, but I'm just going to make a bit thinner inside her. Just for now, because I don't know. But now we have the dress here, so we can kind of play with it and push it down. Move it down. Marcelo said, the care you have for shapes are so nice to see. Yay. Yes, shapes are everything for cartoon, right? The cleaner we keep them, the more uh, stylized and in control. I feel like I feel like I am. All right, so this is... I need to push the this up more. Floor. This. Oh, yeah. And I lost her the breasts, but that's no worry. We can just do something with this. And probably good for now. I mean, it needs to be way lower. Just for fun. Let's think about it. It's very lower like this. We can break silhouette just a little bit, give her a little something like this. It needs to go in more. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, no, Charles Allison recommended you, and I've been hooked on your workflow ever since. I'm a lecturer in 3D modeling and animation in Jamaica. Nice. Yeah, Charles is amazing. Like I said this before, but I'll say it again. He was uh, one of my mentors when I was on my time at DreamWorks. And uh, it wouldn't be as good as it was if I experienced at DreamWorks if it wasn't for him. So highly recommend looking at Charles' class. He's a cartoon guy as well. So if you ever wanted to take a longer class, We'll recommend his class for sure. All right, something like this. Keep the boobs. I don't know. I'm still on the fence about it. I don't know how I would solve it. Okay. Boom. I think we're in a this in place maybe to stop today and then um 
We almost finished. I mean, we didn't do anything with her wings yet, which is sad. I would want to sculpt a little bit on it. But if you guys are okay with it, I might do this. I might do a bit of work this week and record it. And then uh, next week, I'll show you guys the recording. And if you guys have any questions, I can show a little bit what I did, yada, yada. But just, just for the sake of time, uh, it might be good to do a little bit of during the week for us. And, uh, but I would definitely record it and show it to you all what I did. Should be fun. Thanks, this. Yeah. I think the shoes for now, it's gonna put a little black color. Cool. All right, so before we finish, um, this is our creature, just a reminder. So the thought is she is giving some bamboo shoots something to the creature. And then uh, one thing I thought was the creatures, this one that's gonna eat from her hand, just, just imagine this, okay? Visualize with me. So this guy that's gonna eat from her hand, I'm gonna open his mouth super big. He's gonna be like, you know, kind of like almost like sounds like he's gonna eat the bamboos, but also her hand. I think that could be funny. So he's gonna have like a big mouth eating here. Uh, uh, but she's happy just to be with them. And then um, it's gonna be a little of the story. So again, this one's gonna have open mouth. It's gonna be eating through her hand. Remember, we had some bags here, but instead of ba baguettes, it's gonna be some bamboo shoots coming out. And then we're gonna have one little guy here that we're gonna see from front view kind of eating one of the bamboo shoots. We're gonna have one little guy around here somewhere that's gonna have be sitting eating bamboo shoots as well. And we're going to do one branch up here with one hanging from the tail. Here's the body. Kind of like this. Just kind of looking at her. And around it, I thought, my husband helped me define this. We thought having some tall kind of grass thing. Like imagine some tall grass around. And between some of the grass, we're going to see some of the ears, kind of like some creatures are also coming to get more food. So that's kind of like some rocks around here. So that's kind of like what I'm thinking. Can you guys see what I'm saying? I hope you understand what I just said. But yeah, I wanted to make it feel like a little cozy area. And all these creatures are coming to snatch all her food, you know. So that's the idea. And we'll do that next week and hopefully finish next week. I will not do any crazy texturing. I'm going to do a little more like a clay feeling because there's no much time anymore. I wish we could keep working on this forever, but we need to move on to the other, um, the other uh, architects. But um, yeah. We can play with uh, clay for now. And then on the next archetype, I can do a smaller project. <laughs> And then we can do some texturing and some rigging. What do you all think? Is that cool? All right. So that's it for today. I hope you guys have fun. It was definitely fun. Uh, uh, you know, it's funny. You start working on the, cre on the character, and then I look at the creature. I already see some stuff I want to change on it. But again, anything I do throughout my week, I will record it. So if I do any changes, you guys will definitely see the recording. I'll show it here. And then you, you know, you don't feel like I move, jump forward without you all being part of it. Cool. So that's it. And I see you all next Sunday. Please feel free to, you know, contact on Instagram or something if you have any questions. And um, yeah, that's about it. Have a good one. Any final questions before I finish here? I think everyone's good. I'm going to play the Norman video. Yeah. See you all next Sunday.